Sam, we're back. We are it's back. Really we are halfway there. We're back. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It feels like a crazy time of year, but yet you're exactly right. We, I feel like we're a little bit off season because we kind of had like a Christmas theme, Christmas come early, the last one. But now we're yeah. kind of talking New Year's, right? And now we're kind of talking New Year's. And I love the way that we were kind of looking at like Christmas came early for us. But I am still wearing my Christmas shirt. So I'm very happy with, with that part in it. Oh, yeah, and I think you've got a sparkly yeah. skirt on and it's a tree behind you there. Yeah, yeah we got this. We got this. Lots of All Christmas right. vibes going on. <laughs> we're going to still give you the gift of new curriculum today, whether you're joining us live for the live stream or whether you are watching this later, this is going to help you get ready for January and February. And so if you are joining us live, we want to know that you are here. Feel free to join us. Give us an ECSD shout out. Uh, let us know you're watching. Let us know what school you're from. And uh, as always, we like to give away prizes in our session. And so we're gonna jump in and get started just as everybody is getting cozy here today, but we're gonna talk a little bit about, again, new curriculum halfway through the year. Where are we gonna find all these resources? I know there's some people who are just getting into some of the things that we are doing. And so I'm actually gonna take you here. You see a little screenshot of where we're going uh, and we're gonna take you on a tour because for anybody here who doesn't know, we have school teams who come over five days, we get all 73 of our schools in here to be able to learn about the new curriculum. And what's great about that, it's your principal, up to two other teachers from your school digging in, and they're bringing you back all these great things from our school teams. We just finished our round. We had a whole bunch in here just this last week, and it was pretty exciting. Hey, Sam? Yeah, we had some great hands-on opportunities and it's great to get to meet those school teams and those school teams spent a lot of time this time really planning that implementation. How do we take this back? There were great conversations about what this is going to look like for our staff, how we can support them in different ways. And I love that that's the energy that's in the room, right? Even when we're into December, our last group was yesterday. We're getting close to Christmas concert time, but that energy in the room was just, it was amazing. I loved it. Uh, me too, me too. So we're gonna take it over to our home. If you're new to our home page, check it out, bit.ly slash ECSD new. This is our SharePoint page. This is our mission control, where we will have absolutely everything that you need for the new curriculum in one place. And we're gonna to refer to this a couple times today. So let me just give you your pre-flight checklist so you feel comfortable in our space. Once you get here, you're gonna notice a really important space team this is our school teams this is where all of the resources every single month for the new curriculum is held and when you come here you're going to see our school teams and these are the session slides can i tell you this is like the best birthday party loot bag of resources ever hey sam yeah, and they just keep getting better and better. And I know you're going to show some of those uh, additions that we put in there. But from the beginning at the, at the very first school teams in September and kind of moving on to now, those loot bags are getting heavy. Like it's not the dollar store loot bag. Like it's just like <laughs> high end party city loot bag of things that are in there. Right. Like we've really stepped it up and I'm pretty excited about what's in there. Um, and again, Tell your four to six friends as well. Like those teachers can look at this stuff. They can start engaging in that because we talked a lot about it's coming and it's nice to see what's kind of been built up so that they can have a, a, a nice kind of preview of what to expect, which is, which is something that I think that all teachers would appreciate knowing what's coming up, right? Absolutely. You know, we don't want to be reactive. We want to be proactive. We want to get ready. There's some things we may need to find in our school, like some manipulatives or some books and things. So. Any of the slides that you see Sam and I referencing today, that's from school team session three, because that's where you're gonna find all the information for January and February. So that's what you're gonna look at. I know you can't click on the YouTube video today to get these slides. This is where you're gonna find it. But of course, don't forget on this page, we're also gonna be talking about curriculum crates, those fully developed lesson plans for you to be able to take and use for each grade. You'll be able to pick your grade level, and then just see all of the different resources we have for all of the subject areas just lined up. And one thing, Sam, you were excited about is because we can actually search this site. I could type in, start typing in my grade three, and I'm gonna start to see everything listed on here for grade three on this site, pacing guides, curriculum crates, you name it and I can search it and get what I need. So that's it's really- such a nice addition in SharePoint because I remember 
look, that's how I organize. My organization is based on the search bar. I search in my Google Drive. I search in my OneDrive. Now I, we can search in SharePoint. So I think that that's a great addition to it as well because I might not know what I don't know. So I could just put my grade level in and I can see everything that's coming up or I can put the outcome or the cusp that I'm working on and I can see everything that's there. It's an amazing addition. I, SharePoint just got so much better. <laughs> and of course, pacing guides. We have them released. You're going to find them here and we are going to be able to talk about all of the months that we have available. Just don't forget about those lovely little drop down sections to open up and see all of the guides for that time. So now that we're feeling pretty comfortable, I think we can probably jump back in and start to talk about what's new and upcoming for January and February. And uh, we got pretty excited about this particular edition, Gizmo. I think, uh, yeah, we've got gaz ga gadgets and gizmos of plenty coming our way, I think, right? Well, I'll tell you, not only are we going to show the gadgets, gadgets and gizmos of plenty, there's going to be some oozits and what's its galore uh, once we jump into the second part here. So this is what we really shared with all of the schools. Gizmos isn't new. Even though we have a new curriculum, this is a, the largest online digital library uh, of the interactive resources for math and science simulations. And so I'm gonna take you, we're gonna to go to the new Learn Alberta, show you where you can find them there first. And so I went to curriculum.learnalberta.ca. I made sure I was logged in to that top right-hand corner. And of course, I'm on the Explore Resources tab. And what's lovely is I just searched Gizmos. And what I can see is 182 results for the different gizmos. I like searching this way, even though we can see them aligned with all the different outcomes. But on here, now that's an alphabetized list of all of the different topics of the gizmos. And one thing I'm already noticing is, wait a second, this is K to six. This is not just K to three new curriculum. Your grade four, five, and six teachers can use this for existing curriculum as well as start to think about how this will apply to them coming up soon. And so when you go and you want to, you know, check out one of these different uh, gizmos, let's hit here, Chocomatic, uh, being able to, to look at this resource, I'm going to go ahead and select it. And right here I can see, look at all the grade levels that this already supports using multiplication from grade three all the way to grade five. Now I can click view resource and what's lovely about it is it's a complete interactive simulation. And so I'm going to be able to use this. I'm going to be able to use the design molds, change my arrays. I can start to, you know, fill my spaces, all those different pieces here. But there's this lesson info button that's so powerful for teachers. Not only am I going to get the student exploration sheets and look at that Google Doc that can go in Google Classroom for all of you Google Classroom users, the teacher guide, answer key, vocabulary sheet. You know, we've got all the vocabulary on our pacing guides, but teachers are going to be able to go through here and they're going to see those learner objectives, vocabulary, overview, and then they completely break down the entire lesson step by step. Even extension activities are on here. And as well, I love this part, the mathematical background for teachers to truly get that concept so they feel confident teaching students. Yeah, and I think this is just another great resource for our students to get some hands-on experience with, with using those manipulatives, with working with the different um, different math, I guess, processes in different ways, right? And we're going to go into a little bit about what, what experience we went with math in a little bit as well. They had a great experience. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Now, one of the things you're probably thinking is, well, this is great, but I had to log into the NLA. How do I get this to students? It does only give us just a little portion of the power of Gizmo. So, did you say gizmos and gadgets are plenty? This this is kind of the next piece. This is the next step. To. Use this new Learn Alberta to find the outcomes and how it is aligned with curriculum. But when you can go to the gizmos.explore learning page itself, uh, what's really exciting about this, we have an amazing person. You can see her name scrolling across the bottom here. This is Karen Bloomhagen at explorelearning.com. She can help you. You send her an email, she will get you set up. But now when you log in, you actually get even more because not just the gizmos for math, science is included on here too, and you're going to see them all. So I'm going to see all of these different gizmos 
STEM gizmos, but Sam, I love this. It's the on-demand PD teaching teachers how to use gizmos, how to get it to their students, how to create student logins. So students are using these interactives um, on their Chromebooks or their other devices. So I love this one here. If I just click into the, the reaction time, we're doing graphs and statistics here. Again, not only do I have all those student exploration sheets, but now is where I'm going to see the other languages this is available in. If you are in a French oh, immersion man. school, we've got French uh, language supports. There's some Spanish language supports that are in the gizmos here as well. So it gives you just even more uh, support as well as being able to launch this and add it to a class of students. So we like being able to have both worlds of the NLA for that alignment, but come on over to Gizmos and contact Karen. She will get you set up and she even just needs a list, your whole staff list of emails. She'll set up your whole staff in, in one lovely fell swoop. Yeah, it was really quick. And especially with all of our school teams coming, she got some mass emails sent to her with a bunch of teacher names and she was right quick to get those on there and get exploring. So not a bad idea to get going on that maybe this week or next so that maybe your teachers can spend some time just doing some navigating before Christmas and figuring out what they want to do when they come back with these new uh, with a new resource. I love it. I love it too. So check that out. We've got all that information here for you to be able to explore, give it a go, try those ones. And uh, I can't wait to see what everybody does with this because it really is exciting. But speaking of exciting, we got something coming up you're part of. Hey, Sam. Yeah, so um, one of my partners in crime, Katerina Campbell, our science, fabulous science consultant, is putting together a mini summit. And the idea behind the mini summit is to really showcase new science curriculum, how it's interacting with current curriculum, how we're looking at cross-curricular ideas. And there are going to be some amazing hands-on sessions. So I'm really excited. I get to come and showcase one of my favorite tools, Google Earth, but really how it fits with our new science curriculum. But of course, I'm going to throw in some social in there because I can, <laughs> right? Um, we have uh, our fabulous uh, kind of Mickey Makey's coming. We have some robotics coming. Uh, actually, I think you're coming too, Trish, aren't you? You know, you can take the girl out of M-Tech, but I never really will stop. I'm doing a whole exploration with Makey Makey's, electrifying learning. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's great. I remember coming to your Makey Makey session, which inspired my Makey Makey sessions now. So I think that's pretty awesome. So we're going to get the OG. Trish Rofi is going to be presenting at the summit as well. So if that's not worth coming for, I don't know what is. But of course, there's going to be great learning happening there. There's in-person sessions. There's virtual sessions. St. Kateri is going to be our host school. Uh, and so we're going to be able to use a lot of their spaces. But again, if you can't come in person, there will be some virtual sessions. Go to events.ecsd.ca. You can register there. Um, and and then I think this is, I don't know the exact date that it's taking place. So we just, we have it safe is, It's district wide PD. It's January ah, 19th. Okay. Go to oh, ecsd.net. You are set. And uh, there'll be lots of information in the swag as well. So. Yes. Read that swag. It's important. <laughs> yes, right? I, okay. Yeah. Half reminding myself to do it all the time too. Read the swag. Okay. Are you ready? So I got to do a little something here. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Love that part. Oh, we did it. I don't know how. We have six months of resources completed for the new curriculum. Can I tell you a fun stat that I looked up for these pacing guides? Because we got brand new pacing guides for January and February, all grades, all subject areas. Do you want to know how many views and clicks we've had of our pacing guides? Just okay, I do want to know because I feel like feel like it's a well-used resource based on the topic. When I go out to schools, they're like, oh, pacing guides. But I, what's the actual stats on that? 14,552 views. That's easy as the only of these pacing guides. That's and that's amazing. why we're counting today's release party. So that's going to go up. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. We just finished school teams. So now it's just going to go up from there. That's amazing. And I mean, really, we, we can look at these January and February moving up all through till, till we actually get to January. These are ahead of the game, which is nice, right? So uh, we oh can gosh. plan ahead. And there's two really cool new features. We're always, you said we're always adding to what we're doing. We now feature the religion it has now been aligned and paced out for January and February for grades one to six. And as well, uh, we have some UDL strategies and ideas thanks to our inclusive team that have included in these guides. So they're just becoming even more of a valuable resource. But I think the thing, as much as we love the posters and 
we might have a prize of some of those pacing guide posters today, I think. Um, click, go to those digital ones because they are so full of video tutorials, lessons, curriculum crates, books, examples, checklists, teacher slides, student templates, you name it. You want the digital resource, you can get all of those extras. Yeah, and every icon seems to leave somewhere else. So don't be afraid to click. Be like, is it? I'm not sure. Just yeah. hover, click. Just see what it does. Click. Click, right? Yeah. You can be that first person to access that that secret click and see what happens when you click there. But there's some amazing new resources that are on there. Um, our team worked so hard on them, um, and we had a lot of eyes on them working through all of it and working as a whole kind of cohesive group together. It's it's a, been a really great process to work at LS and kind of work towards these as a whole elementary group. It's been great. Hey, so you bring up a good point. I, I hope all of our teachers out there know 28 different consultants from four different departments actually work on these individual guides. So it's a real team effort and it's a lot of making sure that this is pedagogically strong and the best resource that we can put out for our teachers. All right, speaking of resources, whew, we've got 30 four new curriculum crates fully developed lessons complete and ready for you for january and february it's like every single grade and every single subject area has a brand new crate for these next two months which is just so and we're, and we're so excited to make them like going through the process is great we're inspired by other teachers um we're inspired by stories of teachers using them in their classrooms and pictures and we'll talk about that a little bit too but the inspiration of making these crates has just been i, I mean huge which is why we're creating 34 new crates for january and february 34 it's crazy yeah, it's great it's so great and one of the things that we're going to notice if you went and found those school team slides wherever we have a subject area overview update we always break down every subject area for this moment of time in january and february so here is just an example of english language arts we have this for all the subject areas but we gave some little clues for if this new cusp or learning outcome, kind of some sticky spots or something new, wherever you see a crate icon, it means we've got a lesson for that. So you can use that for inspiration. You can use that to follow yourself. And of course, they're all completely editable because we want you to make them yours and customize it to your class and your student needs. Now, Speaking of those overviews, we put things together a little differently this time to support our schools and to really look at how we can have that anytime, anywhere PD following our school teams. Right. And this is where we talked about how we really leveled up this, this loop bag and this kind of PowerPoint to take back to your staff. So what we were able to do is um, all of our new curriculum subject areas created amazing hands-on experiences that the school teams all got to take part in. But we were thinking, hey, what if somebody else, what if other groups want to engage in this? So we created virtual experiences for everyone as well inside of these um, different PowerPoints. So mine is a little, um, kind of talks a little bit about what happens with January and February. I've got my video in there to give you the I guess kind of the quick synopsis of what one, two, and three kind of look like when we're looking at January and February. All the crates that we're looking at that we've got, I shouldn't even say all of that. There's only half of them I highlighted in there. There's actually there's actually a lot more. There's few ones. There's more ELA ones, right? There's lots of crates that kind of feature social and social studies cross-curricularly. And of course, the skills, we want to highlight those skills. So this kind of setup allows groups of teachers, individual teachers. Actually, no, we don't really want individuals. No, you're right. Yeah, there's a powering I take that back. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, imagine this live stream if it was just one of us alone. <laughs> <laughs> it would not go over so well if it was just you by yourself, let alone just me by myself. I'd be clicking all these buttons and not sure what's, what's happening on the other end. So you're right. You definitely need to do this as a team. Love it. Yeah. That's for sure. But where there's two, there is, you know, power. And so watching those videos, you're not only going to see this one on the social studies page. Of course, we've got that exact same thing 96 yeah. science is also included here with that same breakdown of crates that overview what to focus on not only in topics and skills but that of course being able to you know if you want to preview ahead if you're science pilot school you are going to see that all broken down here everybody else this is your reality next year so kind of, kind of a little preview of what you'll see but again we did that for ICT, our, our, our 
educational technology curriculum is still valid and legal. And so you, we get that overview. And if you're looking for a fun way to do some tech and, and get that little kind of Christmas, keep our little monkeys going until the very last day, we've got a great decorate the tree uh, tutorial video using Brust Ninja, thanks to our M tech team. Oh, and I'm going to add just a layer onto that because I'm looking at that activity and right away I see geographic thinking. Which way are you going? How are you connecting them? Right, left, north, south, east, west, right? We do all kinds of things with that. I love how you can link absolutely everyone <laughs> to social studies. This is why you have so many crates. I think you have the most crates out of anybody. <laughs> There's a lot of connections. Uh, and we're going to keep that fun going because any of our uh, French immersion schools, this is the Philal pilot that we're doing again. Uh, this, these activities and these different types of language acquisition and development, yes, it's for the new French immersion curriculum, but any type of those French language supports, you can use these resources in your classroom to be able to support curriculum. And so we have that for January and February you'll be able to see, and everything's clickable. Click on the crates, click on the resources, click on those different things. We also had assessment. Now what's neat once you get to assessment, English language arts, phys ed and wellness, these are full PD experiences for, like I said, those partner teachers, those groups of teachers. So when you watch the videos, they're about, they're planned to be about an hour for each one of those subjects. They're play and pause. So you're going to hear consultants like us talking, Hey everybody, here's some information, pause here, do this. So there's still hands on experiences as part of it. And that's where they're going to list all those materials that you need for the experience in addition to the video that's going to happen. But there is a really nice takeaway message. You really, you really summarized it really well uh, as we were listening to the, the, the assessment people talking about this month. And, and, and I love your analogy. <laughs> I can't even take credit. I swear. It's one thing that I thought we, we started talking about the architecture of the new curriculum, how it's built. And there was a statement said that it says the band stays together. Keep the band together always. And so Trish and I, we were brainstorming, which band do we want to highlight? I thought the Beatles. Then we thought about uh, Def Leppard. No, no. Oh. Daft Punk was one of them. And then we thought we'd go with the Spice Girls. It's a nice little 90s touch there for everybody. But it was so devastating when they broke up. So we don't want to break up our cusps. Those are designed to be sequential. They're designed to follow that pattern. So it's really important that when you're looking at the architecture of that new curriculum, that you see that there's that flow and that sequential system and the way that it is designed and organized. So the activity that the assessment team has put together is a great one for really coming to that realization on your own. You're saying, oh, that makes sense, right? So it was that opportunity, yeah, to really get that aha moment without just looking at it this way. So I do, I highly suggest looking at that assessment activity, but really keeping in the back of your mind, keep the band together. That analogy yeah. is going to be there when you're planning. Keep the band together. Love it. And think about teachers. TQS3 leaves the professional judgment of planning to teachers. So even though the curriculum is listed in that sequence and it goes from, you know, from knowledge level all the way up the Bloom's taxonomy increases in complexity, we can still chop up, reorganize, cluster and create those sequences based on the needs of our students. We are given that professional space to do that. What we don't want to do is just cherry pick certain cusps, check them off and move on. We want to have this holistic experience so that we can keep layering on complexity. So reach out to your assessment team if you've got more questions and uh, we know we're going to have a lot of fun being able to use these band analogies. Don't break anybody up. We can't just remove problem solving from you know addition and subtraction right no nope, can't just take that part away it wouldn't it would what would it be music would it be lyrics would it be melody right we can't get rid of either we need them both we need the band together yeah i love that i love that so then we jump into we call them the big mama you know the new curriculum big subject areas and a few things you'll see on there is again that full slide deck these are great not only for that teacher professional learning, but you can take and use these slides with your students. So you can take them, chop them up. There's some great videos, some great your turn, do this activity. The focus this month was comprehension and we're bringing out those best practice strategies that we know are so strong in the classroom. Things like graphic organizers, you know, the brain science of how that actually creates memory for students so that they can do something like a retail later is really effective. So you'll have a video, 
you'll have the slide deck and again, that full resource list of what you need. But didn't they amp up this one a little bit? Didn't they have extra, extra giveaways, I think, at our oh, sessions we should tell them about? Right. You got yeah. it. We have some reading behavior cards, these powerful conversation starters, those assessment and feedback pieces that you can use with students. A whole entire deck was given to each school at our school team meeting. So track down that principal, be like, hey, where are those cards? These are also available from printing services. Uh, there's writing behavior cards that are also available. You'll find them on the ELA SharePoint site. Printing services has them. And Sam, I think we might even have a set as a prize after our live stream today. Oh, I think we might have a set of them to give away as well. Yes, we do. Excellent. Yeah, I love them. They were they were quite a hit. A lot of people were excited about that with our feedback. People talked about how excited they were to have just something quick and easy that you could staple in an agenda to send that information home that students could fill out on their own. There's lots of things that we could do with these ones. But there were conversation cards as well, which I wanted to highlight. So your your school team that was here also might have some conversation cards that, that came, I guess, back to your school. And I love those conversation cards because they're great for social studies. They're great for science with any type of conversation that you're trying to build in your classroom. They were a great tool as well. So make sure you look for those as well. Those were great giveaways. They're all linked in the slides. This is what's great. Your birthday party loop bag has everything that you can print and use. Now, math had some fun too. This was a real good chance. You know, after COVID, we kind of put a lot of math manipulatives away. They might have found a new resting place in your school. And I love that that the math team kicked off with a Jamboard scavenger hunt, showing you what to go and look for in your school. Take a picture, find it. And in this case, we were using balances. And it's like, again, we've seen these tools since the original implementation of, of you know, 2007, uh, but now we're bringing them out. And I think one of the big messages of the day is manipulatives are not just for young kids. Manipulatives are not just for kids who can't. This is an absolutely critical resource to move from concrete representation to abstract thinking. And so that's one of the things we were showing how to do everything from, uh, you know, friendly numbers and making 10 and, and making, you know, basic addition equations to, we got up to order of operations and multiplication using this exact same Fractions. Tool. We got fractions and we had ratios in there. We had multiplication, division. We had off missing numbers. We had input output for our, our upper grades, right? Like there was time. I, I, I honestly was blown away at the magnitude of this, this material that I may or may not have used in the makerspace for not um, mathematical purposes. So maybe they're in your makerspace. Also, if you have one of those, go look in there. It might be in there. They might be there. These are somewhere. And so you're going to find that scavenger hunt of what you're looking for. The play and pause video put together by Carolyn Leps on the math team is absolutely fantastic. Those pause moments in there to really engage with some hands on thinking. That video actually, I think, is even awesome to use with kids. You could play that in your classroom and have that exact same sort of Look what we're doing, try these experiences, use that slide deck. It's gonna give you some of those challenges. And we even have some links to those virtual balances until you can find the real ones. We want some hands-on ones in there, but it's a great way for that extension and that practice, even just using Chromebooks. All right, and we kept on going. We ended off here. Oh, did we have fun in Phys Ed and Wellness. This team gets us moving and it shows us that this physical education and wellness is more than about gym, more than just sport play. You know, it's not all about dodgeball. They really show us, they even brought in some different Inuit activities as part of this too. And what I love is every single one of their activities has a complete video. All of us consultants were doing the, the task. And so you can look at that and recreate that. This is staff team building classroom experiences you could use this for so much they've given you those easy easy low lift high impact activities right now here you're going to see even a suggested schedule 
And then they've got a couple of really special resources. One went back to your schools, but you can also order these from printing services. But I don't think I can do it justice. I think we just need to play the video. Yes, I really I think we need to show that video. It was amazing. OK, so if you're looking for something to do to get those kids active and outside that week before Christmas break or as you get back in the new year, take advantage of it not being minus 40. Uh, this might help you out. Antonio and I'm Brett. Welcome to the Nature Walk, where you never know what you'll find. Hi, Jackie Coco here. I am going to do a nature scavenger hunt today. I am going to find two things to bounce on, something to crawl under, and three things to jump over. There's lots more on this list. Let's give it a go. Okay, I'm bouncing. <laughs> Adventurous play here at its finest. <laughs> You can give that a crawl under. Fred Penner style. <laughs> I <think> Fred Penner. <laughs> this one's jumping over a log, right, Jackie? I think I got a good one here. Here we go. Yeah! You call that a log? This is a log. Woo! Check. Check. Hmm. We're having so much fun on our nature walk here. What are we going to do next? We're going to look for tracks and then figure out which animal created them. But how will we know which animal created what track? Oh, Brad. What's that? <gasps> we are going to use this book. This is an awesome book that was made in the division a few years ago. If you want to learn anything about animals, birds, bugs, and trees in Alberta, you can use this as a reference book. And guess what? There's one for everyone in the audience. Woohoo! You mean like this track? Hmm, let's see. I don't know if this is a match, Brett. Does it look like a jackrabbit track to you? <laughs> well, what about these tracks? Well, Brett, these are coyote tracks. And you can tell that they're coyote tracks and not simple dog tracks because they're closer together because that's how coyotes move. You can just check for reference in our handy dandy book right here. Oh, this is an amazing nature walk. I'm having a great time out here. Hey, did you hear that bird song? <laughs> oh yeah, I heard it. <laughs> People need to borrow hey, that for bird sounds. Did you hear that bird? It's a downy woodpecker. That's a bird that can be commonly found in the winter in Alberta. I did hear that bird. <laughs> we'll probably have to do that with the kids too. Thanks for joining us on the Nature Walk. I hope you had as much fun watching this as we did filming it. This Nature Walk has been so amazing. I can hardly imagine it getting any better. Brett, Brett, look, look, deer. Oh. I can't see anything. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. That was put together by our phys ed and wellness team. And uh, guess what? You can actually get your copy from printing services. Every school team left with a copy for your school. And I'm pretty sure we might have a copy coming up here in a couple minutes. Uh, one of the things we're introducing this round of school teams, we want to see people put this learning into action. If you try anything you try any of these lessons a hands-on thing it's you and your teacher partner doing the virtual pd together a staff meeting like anything we've got a link here for you to enter to win bit.ly slash ecsd celebrate you get to just say what did you do what was your aha moment you upload a photo or a video of you engaged in that activity you're now entered to win and at our next school teams round that's happening in february we're going to be drawing names and we are sending back to schools some serious swag and resources so i mean if this was me i would probably try each one of them and enter a whole bunch of times because i want my school to win i'm a little competitive that way i think you are too hey sam <laughs> i think you're muted 
there's implementation that's already happening. People were already putting their pictures in there. I loved it, right? And we were talking about this at just at the school teams. So I think it's pretty amazing. I'm so excited to see everything that comes up there. And uh, I'm excited to see the prizes too. I'm not really sure what those big prizes are going to be. Uh, you might have seen some in some of the videos and some of the other pieces coming up for March and April's pacing guide. So we're getting a little excited here. But to wrap up today, we want to make sure, hey, also, if you're taking those photos and videos, if you're throwing things on social media, tag us. We want to be able to celebrate you and show off that amazing learning that you're doing. And, and speaking of wanting to give you prizes, after you've watched this live stream today, we know that we have some viewers today, we always have some people that are going to watch it later. We're going to be pausing here. We're going to just show you the prizes we're giving away. We're going to be drawing for them before Christmas break so that we can IMC this to your school. You simply fill out this fitly. And what will we have to give away, Sam? Okay, so we kind of already gave this one away a little bit. I feel a little bit like, you know, Vanna White with the prizes. So we know that we're going to get the reading cards from our ELA team, our ELAL team. And again, like I said, these are great for anyone um, and any classes that they could use. They're just like quick, easy, little tearaway pads. They're amazing for giving that formative feedback. Um, okay, so then I was really excited when we, unfortunately, we had to modify a little bit of our, our teacher working groups this time. So we really did it a digital version of the teacher working groups. So normally the pacing guides that we print out here at LS have markings all over them. They've got pen and paper and sticky notes and highlighters and all kinds of different additions and edits. But because we did them virtually, we have... Is that a whole set of January and February? Set. Not just one. This is actually quite heavy. We have a whole set of pacing guides that are in mint condition, ready to go to a school that sets um, that fills out that form as well. So we've got all of them here. So it's a set of pacing guides that are the, the printed copies that are everybody's asking for. They all want these printed copies. So those are there. They are untouched, which is a beautiful thing. So that is um, okay. Oh, I have to reach way over because those pacing guides are there. Oh, I love it. All right. So we wanted to uh, let you have an opportunity to join our uh, Pew team as well and go on some nature walks over the next little bit. So we will be giving away one of these books. Yes, you can order them through printing services. They're, I think, $20? 20 bucks. Yeah. 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 So this way, you're going to get this one from Learning Services. You'll get it from us, and we'll get it sent out to you right away so you could hopefully use this one. And we didn't really talk about it, but if you participate in the hands-on activities with our phys physical education and wellness, this prize of a tarp will it's make a lot sense. of sense, right? <laughs> right now, you're probably like, why are they giving me a tarp? Is it to wrap my Christmas tree in at the end of the season? No, no. Nope, this nope. is going to be a, an amazing educational tool, but you will have to um, click on that physical education and wellness teams, interactive virtual kind of slides in order to get a good idea of what actually to do with this. Um, but it really, truly is an amazing prize. If I had to pick one, I wouldn't be able to. I would, I would try to, again, fill out the form as many times as I could to to win these ones as well. I love it. So we're going to be drawing for these before Christmas break. We'll probably give these a draw on the 22nd of December so that we can get them thrown into IMC. Fill this out. We're going to draw those prizes and I can't wait to reveal those names. But everybody, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for being part of our fun, our live stream. And uh, happy, happy new year. Merry Christmas, all of the things, but mostly have a nice two week break knowing that your planning is in place. We're here to support you and you're ready for the new year. Thanks everyone. Bye.